Hello and welcome back to another episode of Lift G Showcase. Now we've actually got some very exciting news on two counts actually. Um, first is that we've actually now finally launched uh, the Lift G website where you can find out um, much more information about Lift G. Um, that's been exciting because it's been in development for years now <laughs> practically. Um, but also uh, another exciting piece of news is that we have launched a, a very early alpha release of Lift G OS. Um, for their desktop computers um, and we are providing a live ISO image which you can then install onto any computer you like um, and yeah it's, it's <laughs> finally glad to have uh, a release of the OS is taking about I don't know five months of development of you know not just G shell um, but also the underlying core especially uh, on the Lift G Prism as well um, considering that's quite an important aspect uh, but yeah, both of those um, pieces of news are quite exciting. Um, I'm now going to actually start uh, with more about Lift GOS and how to install it in your own virtual machine environment. Okay, so I'm now going to be running Lift GOS in VirtualBox. Now, as you know earlier, we uh, have created a, our very first alpha release of Lift GOS uh, for PCs. Um, and I'm now going to, well, in fact, let's first show you the release page on GitHub. So you can download uh, the ISO file on uh, GitHub, uh, liftg.tech slash OS, um, and it's on the GitHub releases page. Uh, you can download this, it's about 1.72 gigabytes, um, and that will run in VirtualBox, and it should technically run on uh, real systems as well uh, and maybe also on live USB although I haven't tested both of them yet um, it's only I've only tested it virtually um, our website still doesn't have a link for downloading it yet I suppose because it's still in alpha um, we may we may provide a, uh, a link at the bottom because currently it says you know coming soon um, which is fair um, but <clears throat> the main focus is we're gonna look at VirtualBox and we're gonna create a new uh, virtual machine and we'll call it uh, LiveGOS. Um, and we're going to change the type to Linux because LiveGOS is a Linux based operating system. And we'll choose D uh, Debian 64 bit because that's what <laughs> that's what it's based off of. Um, let's give this, I don't know, 4096, 4 gigs of uh, memory because my, <laughs> my computer will be able to handle it just fine. And um, we'll create a virtual hard disk, of course. Um, that'll be fine. 8 gigs will be plenty. Um, if you actually increase it to um, an even higher amount, let's say, uh, I think 32 gigs. Yeah, let's do 32 gigabytes um, because LiveGOS uh, at a certain size will allocate a swap file uh, which stores your virtual memory and that's applicable for, I believe, 24 gigs of uh, hard disk or you know storage space uh, internally plus. Um, so 32 gigs will allow this just fine. Um, and we'll have 8 gigs to swap. Uh, so yeah, let's create that. And it's time to start. Um, now it'll ask us to you know insert our disk. For me it's called LiveGOS, uh, sorry, system.iso um, and that contains LiveGOS, of course, the same 1.72 gigs. Let's start it. Now I actually might need to configure some of the display settings, so um, might not be able to do it here. Yeah, so I'll tra just change the... <laughs> well, we'll power it off for now. It's only a live ISO. Um, as you saw just a moment there, the screen resolution was uh, a bit off. Um, I believe I might be able to change it. Um, it's a bit of a nuisance because uh, it's VirtualBox. Um, Let's just start it anyway. Uh, you'll get the idea later on because I'll, I'll run through the uh, the uh, the setup process later uh, to show you some new features. So here we go. Lift GOS is booting, and it doesn't take really long at all. Um, when we come to this screen, um, select English as my language. Um, you may have noticed that you can choose French there, and the language does change to French. Um, funnily enough. <laughs> Uh, keyboard layout and language region, uh, there's not much options yet, but they'll do. And we'll be asked to either install LiveGOS or try it out. Um, I'm going to install it because we're on our live ISO. Um, 
And as you'll see, we've got our 32 gigabytes um, of storage, which equals 34.4 gigabytes. Uh, there's a slight difference there in terms of uh, that kind of stuff. Um, choose a partition. We'll tell it. We'll tell it to erase the entire disk because. Uh, there's no partitions on this newly created disk yet, and uh, it's not worth creating a new partition manually because we won't get swap file um, that way. Um, so we'll cl click next, and it'll ask us if we're ready to install, which we are, so confirm. And now it's going to try and copy the system files to the new disk. It really doesn't take that long. Um, Surpri rather surprisingly, uh, despite Linux being quite a big uh, system, it takes less than a minute to you know copy your files, install stuff, etc. So that's really nice. <clears throat> we'll give it just a couple of moments. Looks like it's nearly done. It'll then install the bootloader um, onto the system. Uh, on the disk rather, um, that only takes a few seconds. It can take, well, it might take a while, but uh, it doesn't take too long. There we go, and it'll finish up, and it will restart in six, five, I mean I could click that, but <laughs> can't be bothered. <laughs> and boom. Uh, now is a good time to change your boot device, otherwise it'll boot into Libg <laughs> OS setup, so we'll reset the machine and press F12 and it'll ask us, yep, we want the hard disk option one. And it'll say now it's booting Libg OS. So it's gonna do that. On our newly created disk and here we go. So it'll return to setup again. It'll ask us, you know, English QWERTY and now it'll ask us for our name. So I'll just enter my name like so, <laughs> you can see that our uh, typing suggestions <laughs> are all working. Um, that's still just a thing that um, is being used for testing purposes right now. That's all fine, and we're all done. Uh, so I can press finish. We should come to the lock screen. Um, we can unlock it like that, and boom. Um, I don't have any networks configured on VirtualBox at the moment, so <laughs> uh, it's just settings that you can really use right now. Um, and it, as you can see, it works just like uh, you know, lived you a G shell on you know my main system. You know, um, you can configure Wi-Fi networks and stuff. Obviously, I don't have a network card um, in this virtual machine. Change language if I want, like so. Very useful for those who are multilingual, I suppose. Accessibility, and it, it's all working just like um, you'd expect. Uh, if not, <laughs> well, the screen resolution is a bit um, off, but it's it's fine. Um, we'll be able to configure that later on. Uh, hence the smallness. Um, we'll just switch. We'll just shut it down. And that's about it to show you in terms of the ISO file. Um, so yeah, next we'll be moving on to uh, improvements on G shell. Um, you know, there's some there have been some improvements uh, before the ISO has been created, so they feature in the ISO itself, and there have been a number of improvements that have been adding after the creation of the ISO. Um, so yeah, there's that. Okay, now on to um, some stuff about G Shell, um, and as you've noticed, we it's looking slightly different right now. Um, it's currently through the Live GOS. Uh, setup procedure, um, or the OOBS as we call it uh, internally, um, and as you'll see on the left, there are some nice graphics. Um, let me just uh, restart for you. There you go, um, and they've been actually uh, added in quite recently. Um, you'll notice that some of the features, as I've just discussed, um, will be present in the LiveG OS Alpha release that we recently made, um, whereas some things won't. So. These graphics on the left uh, won't be in the alpha release, but they will be in the next release when we uh, release that. So, notice uh, on the right we've got this uh, language selection thing, um, which is the very first thing that you'll see when you uh, boot up uh, LiveGOS for the first time. You can either select English or French, um, as I showed you earlier. Um, and of course, as earlier <laughs> in French works, of course. Um, in fact, the whole OS has been localized into French now. Um, many more languages on the way. 
Um, so you'll select English, of course, and you'll see that there's more animations to do with keyboard um, because you can configure your keyboard layout and more animations here with the uh, choosing installation um, and well it's mainly been um, quite a process of making these animations because you know we've had to kind of come up with the ideas of what to show on each screen um, they've mainly been inspired by um, the Windows 95 uh, setup wizard uh, kind of graphics uh, that you'll see that they're nice and isometric and we've kind of gone for that feel um, so yeah, we we then kind of uh, theorised some kind of basic ideas in high fidelity and low fidelity prototypes, and this is what we arrived at. Um, so I'll, I'll go and install LiveGOS. Um, obviously, because this is running simulated, we've got a dummy disk. <laughs> um, uh, so we're not actually installing to a real disk, and you'll see that another another animation there to do with the disks. Um, so you'll select the dummy disk. And we can choose a partition. We'll erase the entire disk. Of course, you can select things like installing LiveGOS onto an existing partition, etc. Um, as I talked about earlier. And yep, yeah, we'll have another animation for. There's literally an animation for every screen, <laughs> of course. Um, except for a few where it's just still graphics. But, um, well, as you'll see in a moment. But. Um, We'll let this run. Uh, this is actually a dummy delay. Uh, it's not actually doing anything, so I added a, what, a few seconds wait. Um, so it's now going to restart, um, which on the simulator just involves restarting the simulator right now. So let it do that. There we go. And we're back. Um, and yeah, we'll run for it again. And this time we'll select Try Out Live GOS. So I'll enter my name like so. And we're all done. Nice. So on to the main features of uh, G-Shell itself, um, past the setup process. You'll see it's quite largely quite similar to last time, uh, last time seeing that I introduced you to G-Shell. Um, it works in the same way, but you'll notice that at the bottom here is kind of a taskbar kind of setup uh, that you'd see on Windows. We call it the app bar um, on uh, in, in Live G-Speak, um, but yeah, it's similar concept. And we've got stuff like your battery information and time in the corner. Um, and, you know, we can open up other apps. I believe there might be some new additions to settings um, in terms of accessibility and also language. So, yeah, you can change language to French. And as soon as you create, uh, as soon as you start new apps, let's go, uh, not in demo because that's not localized. Um, you also notice at the bottom we've got these the uh, the animations in the taskbar. So look carefully as we pop open Sphere. Um, let's go to Google because that's something which is localized, and you'll see that everything is in French as expected. And as soon as we change the language back to English, stuff in LiveGOS will be localized again, and Google is now in English. Um, and yeah, we are trying to make a search engine. Um, it's quite premature right now. <laughs> but yeah, you can search for, for stuff like LiveG and go to the lovely LiveG website, which is looking nice and especially nice on LiveG OS. Um, so yeah, you can browse stuff freely. I think my internet's gone down, um, sadly. <laughs> Never mind about that. Um, there's not much that's changed um, elsewhere too much. Uh, network stuff is the same. Um, so yeah, there's not not too much light on that front. It's mainly been focusing on the uh, the oobs, the setup thing, um, and you know trying to get that to work, uh, especially with kind of the Linux internals. This is what this code all here is about. Um, there's a lot of it uh, which basically executes Linux commands like uh, SF disk. Uh, which allows for formatting and well not formatting in this sense um, mainly just you know editing partitions formatting actually happens later on with uh, mucfs.x4 <laughs> make uh, makefs ext4 basically uh, is what that command means um, as well as making swap memory uh, etc and there's a lot of fallback stuff so um, there's basically an error code for every step of the process uh, when you're installing, so that's quite useful for diagnosing problems. Um, yeah, and then we get to the finish step before we 
finally reboot um, and let you continue the setup process for setting up you know your user accounts and stuff after installation. Um, it's, I, I find it a much nicer kind of experience than the Windows setup uh, process because you've got this well when you use a, a installation media for Windows you first see this screen um, which looks like it's been ripped out from Windows 7 with a weird Windows 8 theme and laid up on top of it it's weird and you have to go through accept the license agreement set up partitions and stuff and the overall process doesn't look too appealing whereas ours is much more kind of uh, it has more continuity um, especially because later on in Windows setup uh, with Windows 11 they've got their separate UB uh, OOB or out of box experience um, which is just completely different to installation process, which is weird. Whereas we've managed to kind of tie it all together and at the same time allow people to, uh, you know, try out. I can show you. Actually, I can't because I've set up LibGOS now. Um, try out, you know, LibGOS on the live image without saving changes like this. So yeah, uh, plenty of stuff added to LibGOS, um, or more more precisely, GShell. Um, which has enabled us to, well, effectively release our first um, copy of LiveGOS, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, that's about it on that front. So yeah, that's about it for uh, this episode of LiveG Showcase. Um, there's plenty to be excited about, of course, with all these uh, new features and additions uh, since the last time I spoke to you. Um, unfortunately, of course, not too much on the LiveG Prism this time, um, but a few of the features that have been uh, discussed about today are also available uh, on the prison, uh, such as you know some of the localization stuff, um, so that's really good. Um, and of course, don't forget um, you can check out our GitHub organization for more about the development of various LiveG projects. Um, it's at you know the link shown uh, on screen, uh, github.com forward slash LiveG Tech. Also, you can visit our website, of course, now that we've launched it uh, at LiveG.tech uh, for you know more general information about uh, the stuff we've been doing for in the past few months now so yeah that's great uh, but yeah anyway see you uh, next time and goodbye